Well, it's good to have everyone who's joining us this morning in our service. <clears throat> uh, we just ask that you continue to remember all the prayer requests that have been mentioned, that you uh, continue to remember each other in prayer, and <clears throat> continue to remember all those around the world trying to serve Christ who are true believers trying to spread his gospel. But we want to go ahead this morning and get into the message that the Lord's laid on our heart. So if you have your Bibles and will, turn with me to the book of John. John chapter number 15. John 15. <clears throat> and we want to start reading in verse number 1 of John 15. He says, I am the true vine. And, and remember, this is Jesus Christ himself speaking through all the verses that we're going to read this morning. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, or the farmer, or the gardener, however you want to put it. <clears throat> every branch that beareth not fruit is taken away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, or prunes it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, you... <clears throat> uh, you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth fruit, bringeth forth much fruit. <clears throat> For without me, you can do nothing. Think about that. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide in me, he is... Uh, let me start again. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch <clears throat> and is withered and gathered. <clears throat> um, then men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You shall ask what uh, what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. And the Father hath loved me. So, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. For you, for if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Now, <clears throat> when we go back and we look at, at what Christ has taught us here, he is teaching us to abide in him. All right? And the word abide means to continue in a place, okay? To continue in that same place, uh, to dwell in, to be a part of, to remain patiently and strong in. Okay, this is what he's talking about. And Jesus Christ here gives us the same example that we find later in, in the writings of the Apostle Paul, who gives us our doctrine, that we are to remain 
in Christ. Okay, as believers, we become a part of his body, as we find in 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12, that the body is many members, <coughs> but that it is one body working together. As Jesus Christ is the head, we are the body. Okay, so <coughs> what we're talking about is being in Christ, remaining in Christ. So you ask the question, what does it mean to be in Christ? All right. Well, we know who Jesus Christ is. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is all in all to us. All right. <clears throat> and remember what he even told us here. He says, without me, you can do nothing. All right. Without Christ, we can accomplish or do nothing. But we also know that Philippians 4.13 makes it very plain that I can do all things, okay, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So we know that it comes through Christ. Without him, we can do nothing. But with him, we can do all things, anything that God would expect. Now, what we're going to talk about this morning is what it is to abide in Christ and what you receive when you abide in Christ, when we continue in the place of Christ, when we stay strong and wait patiently in Christ, when we are doing what he would have us to do, when we withstand the world, when we stand for him, not against him, what it is to be in Christ. Now, there are some scriptures that give us great insight to what it is to be in Christ. This is to have the attitude of Christ, to be like Christ, to live in him, to be like him, okay? Not because, <clears throat> remember, <clears throat> he is very plain to us that if we remain in him, we will be his disciples. What were disciples? Disciples are followers, devout followers of someone, okay? And so what he's saying, if you want to be his disciples, then you have to be devout followers of what he does. You have to have the mind that he has. You have to have the understanding that he wants us to have. We have to, to <clears throat> grow in him so that we can be more like him. Why would we desire to be more like Jesus? Because Jesus was perfect. He never failed. He never sinned. He never committed wrongful acts against anyone. It was always about love and caring. So let's look at the attitude of Christ and what he expects from us from scripture, because this isn't something I say. This is something that God has taught us. Go to Galatians um, chapter number five and come down to verse number 22. Verse number 22, what fruits are we going to bear, okay, if we are in Christ? Now, above this, you can see the fruits that you will bear that are fruits of the flesh, all right? Rotten fruit, fruit that's no good, fruit that doesn't work very well, all right? <laughs> but this is the fruit of the Spirit, all right? <clears throat> Look at verse 22, Ephes I mean Galatians Galatians chapter number 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And he says, against such... There is no law. You don't need a law against these things. You don't need to know the knowledge of good and evil because all of this is good. All nine of these things, there is no law that can stand against it because they're all good things. <coughs> Look at them again. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, um, <coughs> meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. <coughs> and they that are... <clears throat> um, look at what it says now. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the rotten fruit, with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, if we are in Christ, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory. Don't be conceited and looking for building up yourself. But <clears throat> don't provoke 
one another, envying or being jealous over one another. All right, another good place to go is into the book of Colossians. All right, let's go into the book of Colossians. <coughs> Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter number 3. And <clears throat> just look at verse 1 and 2 quickly. If you then be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Okay? If you're in Christ, then put it there. Now come down for time's sake to verse number 12. <clears throat> and and look at more things that it means to abide in Christ. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, which is kindness, compassion, okay? And the innermost part of you. Be merciful to one another. Now look at what he says. Put on holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing or just dealing with, you know, being able to bear one another and forgiving one another. If a man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, so also do you. Isn't that something? If it means to abide in Christ, and Christ did it, and we want to be his disciples, we want to follow him, then we have to do what he did. <coughs> so if we get upset with somebody else, then it's our job to forgive them, even as Christ forgave you, even though we don't deserve forgiveness, and they may not either. But as Christ forgave, so must we. All right? <coughs> and above all these things, put on charity, which we know is love which is the bond of perfectness. Because of love, if we truly love, then that separates us from everything else. Everything we do is just like Christ. We do it out of love, out of kindness, out of humbleness, out of compassion. Everything we do is because we care about others. Now, can we honestly say that in our lives? But this is what it is to abide in Christ, okay? These are the things that we must strive to achieve in our lives so that we can develop a relationship with God so that we become stronger and that we abide in that vine, okay? Verse 15, and the peace of God rule in your hearts <clears throat> to the which also you are called in the body and be you thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, because this is where we get our wisdom, from the words of Jesus Christ himself, living in him. Admonishing or pushing or, or building up one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do, <clears throat> in word or deed, whatever you are going to do, do all in the name of Lord, of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Now, these are just two quick examples. We could go to more places. We could go over to First Thessalonians five. We could go into Ephesians four. We could continue to go into lots of different places of what it is to remain in Christ. <clears throat> all right. But what we want everyone to know is go back to John 15, all right, and look at this in verse 1. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Okay? He is the vine. Now, we have a full understanding of what the vine is. The vine is the life source of the plant. All right? <clears throat> all right now, think about it in things that are vines that you and I know and understand, especially right now as we're watching our gardens grow and seeing things happen. We see the vine <clears throat> with green beans on it, okay, whatever they may be, half runners, whatever you got. But but we see that. Now, if that bean falls off the vine, what does it do? It begins to die. You see a tomato that is growing on the vine. 
All right, now if that tomato loses itself from a vine and falls on the ground, what does it immediately start to do? It immediately starts to rot. It starts to dry. Why? Because it's lost its life source. But as long as it remains on the vine, it continues to grow. It continues to develop. It continues to mature into the kind of plant that that we need it to be. Okay? This is what happens if it remains on the vine. Why? Because the vine <clears throat> is the life source of that thing. So Jesus Christ is telling us here, and he gave us a list of stuff starting in, in verse number 7. All right. Now, he tells us the importance of remaining in the vine. If you don't remain in the vine, then you're going to die. You're going to be gathered up by men because you're nothing. You're useless. Okay? And then you'll be cast into the fire. Now, he's not talking about losing your salvation. He's talking about those that are in Christ need to abide in that same place, dwell in that same place, continue in that same place. You and I need to continue in Christ because if we continue in Christ, <clears throat> okay, and we have the fruits of the Spirit and we do the things that He expects us to do, and whatever we do in word or deed, we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, and everything we do, we do out of love for one another. We witness out of love, we help out of love, we care. All right? Because our love is so deep. Because our love comes directly from a Savior who loves all. There is no difference. Okay? No difference in his eyes between the Jew and the Gentile. There's no difference in any part of the world. He loves all. He died for all. So we need to understand the kind of love and compassion he has. And this is the same kind of love and compassion that he expects us to show the world. All right. Now, <clears throat> he gave us in verse number seven, he starts to give us something. Let's look at verse number seven real quickly again. As he starts to tell us here in verse number seven, he says, if you abide in me. Okay. Now there is that conditional part. You have to remain in Christ. But as long as you are living your life to the best of your ability to produce fruit, the fruits of the spirit. Okay, if we are trying to produce those fruits of the spirit that we read in Galatians 5.22, okay, if we're trying to produce those fruits of the spirit, we are living in Christ. He said, <clears throat> if you abide in me and my words, if you're going to listen to what you've learned, okay, and you're going to apply what you've learned, if my words abide in you. He said, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, what is he telling us here? He's saying, if you abide in me, if you live in Christ, he said, I will give your prayers power. I will empower your prayers. Now, I'm not saying that, <clears throat> okay, here's the problem with prayer. All right, let me just tell you this. <clears throat> Most of the time when we pray, we pray selfishly. I know that's harsh. I know you say, preacher, you shouldn't pray that. Or you shouldn't say that. But it's the truth. Most of the time when we're asking for things, it's things that will better us, not better others. So, <clears throat> even lots of times when we pray for the sick, as I've said before, when my mother got cancer and I prayed so earnestly for her uh, and for her healing, it was probably more for me, for my family, uh, that we didn't lose her. For those that loved her and cared for her, that, that it didn't go away. And, and that was more of our thought. Okay, It was a selfish prayer. Not because I was asking for her healing. That wasn't selfish. But the reason I was asking for a healing was selfish because I didn't want to lose her. It was me. Okay? So <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. That lots of times we pray selfishly because we pray for ourselves. But prayer should always be about helping others, doing more for others. When Jesus Christ prayed, he didn't pray for himself. All right? 
he prayed for others. He prayed that God would help others. You remember, even when he spoke to God on the cross, and I even talked about this in our Bible study the other day, which just stands out so vividly in my mind, the love of Christ for even those that were so cruel who had just beat him, hung him on a cross with the Roman soldiers, who all those Pharisees who were standing at the bottom of the cross, mocking him, making fun of him, and what was his prayer to God? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. <clears throat> now, that's love. That's love. And that's that's what I'm talking about. He will give your prayers, your prayers, power. If we are praying for the salvation of a soul of a lost because we care so much. If we are praying that God is going to help someone because it is truly going to help them, then that's what it is. So don't become selfish and think, oh, I'm going to get whatever I ask for, so I'm going to ask to be a millionaire, and then God's going to grant me that because Jesus said that whatever I ask, he was going to give it to me if I abide in him. No, if you're producing the fruits of the Spirit, then that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, kindness, if we're producing those things, okay, then those are the things that God is going to bless. <clears throat> God is going to bless others because it's best for them, and that should be our prayer. So he will give your prayers power, okay? He will give you the power to be able to ask things for others and be able to receive it. <clears throat> you remember there's even scripture, um, and where is it? Philippians or in Timothy, I can't remember which, it slips my mind. But where he says, <clears throat> don't seek your own wealth, but another's. Okay, now that's hard for us to think about because we lots of times spend our prayers selfishly. So always think of others and God will empower your prayer because we will have the mind that he does and we will care more about others than we do ourselves. That's what true humbleness is. A humble person is one who cares more about others than they ever do themselves. That's true humbleness. Okay? True humbleness. <clears throat> and we have a man in our churches that is humbleness that we can share with the world. And that's Brother Wayne Braswell. I've always said one of the most humble, humble men that I have ever met. And it's because he has such a love for others in his heart. Okay? And and that's something that that we need to look at, and and that we need to remember that that's the way Jesus Christ always was, caring more for others. So if we want to have our prayers empowered, then focus on others, and that's just the truth from the Word of God. All right. Now he said, if you abide in me, he said, I'm going to give your prayers power. He also tells us, look in verse number eight. Right? He says, if you want to do in that, he said, herein is my Father glorified. What glorifies the Father? That you bear much fruit. Bear much fruit. What are we bearing? The fruits of the Spirit. Okay? Now, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Because if you go back up and read the, the <coughs> you know, the fruits that are of the flesh in Galatians, right, then that's that's not good fruit. We want good fruit. We don't want rotten fruit, right? Nobody wants to pick up a rotten tomato and eat it. Ain't nobody wants to pick up a dead bean and eat it. Okay, an old nasty shriveled up bean that ain't no good for nothing. Ain't nobody wants that. Nobody wants an old rotten banana or a rotten apple. We want one that is fresh, that is good. So you you have to ask yourself the question... Am I bearing fruit? Because if you're not bearing fruit, then you're not in Christ where you need to be. I'm not saying you're not saved by God's grace, okay? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, are you dwelling in Christ? Is your mind where it needs to be? Attached to the source of life, producing fruits, fruits of the Spirit. Because what's the next thing that he tells us? He says that if you do this, he said, then the Father will be glorified. Right? This is what glorifies the Father, that you bear fruit. Okay, And if you are abiding in Christ, then God is getting the glory. 
God is getting the honor. God is getting the distinction. God is getting recognized. It doesn't ever matter that you and I get recognized. What matters is that God gets recognized. It doesn't matter that our church gets recognized. What matters is that God gets recognized. If we start promoting Okay, <clears throat> for instance, if you just start promoting the pastor, then the pastor is all that's ever going to get recognized. If we start promoting the church, <clears throat> then the church is all that's going to get recognized. We don't want me to get glory. We don't want the church to get glory. We don't want individuals within our church to get the glory. There's nothing wrong with bragging on a pastor, a teacher, a deacon, a church. Okay, I'm not saying that. Saying, oh, come here. You know, we love the Lord. We serve the Lord. But the glory goes to God. All right? It doesn't go to the people. It doesn't go to an individual. It doesn't go to the church itself. It goes to God. All right? And when we give him the glory, then we will bear much fruit. All right? <clears throat> Remember what Jesus said even earlier? <clears throat> over in the book of Matthew, he said, you know, do your works. All right? Let your light shine before men that they can see God and glorify God. Let your light so shine before men that you get God the glory. All right? That he is glorified, that he is lifted up, that he is picked up. All right? But when you do that and he gets the glory, then we bear more fruit for him. We are accomplishing more for him. And so you ask the question, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Because you, you are going to bear fruit. All right? Now, which fruit are you bearing? Fruits of the flesh or fruits of the spirit? <clears throat> when people describe you, how are they going to describe your fruit? When they, <clears throat> Bobby Holscall said one time, he was talking to me and He'd preached a message the Sunday before, and he was telling me about his message, and I always thought this was was a wonderful, wonderful analogy. He said, when you shake that old tree and <clears throat> the fruit falls out of the tree, what kind of fruit is it? Okay, So if someone was to come up and shake your tree, what kind of fruit are they going to find? Rotten fruit or good fruit? What kind of fruit are you producing? Because what he wants us to produce is fruits of the Spirit. If we abide in him, then we are going to produce good fruits. That fruit of the Spirit, that's what he wants us to do. And why do we produce good fruits? That our Father may be glorified. <clears throat> huh? What else did he tell us? He told us that... Um, you will, he tells us. You will, just like when he goes up and just think about it. He says, you will have your prayers empowered, okay? You will bear fruit. You will glorify your Father if you live in him, all right? And you will show your lives to be disciples of Christ. Look here at the rest of <coughs> uh, verse number 8. Let's just read the whole thing again. He said, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. Much fruit. Okay? We bear fruit. God is glorified. He said, So shall you be my disciples. You will be his disciples if you abide in him. You will follow his example, the example that he set forth of the life that you and I should live. There is no greater example for us to follow than our Savior himself, who loved others more than himself. <clears throat> so when we follow his example, and as Philippians 2, 5 says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. When we follow his example, then what are we doing? Hmm? We are his followers. We can't help it. 
We're going to follow his direction. We're going to follow his guidance. We're going to follow his word. We're going to follow the the suggestions and the things that he gives us in life. We're going to follow those things. We are going to be true disciples or followers of Christ. <clears throat> now think about it. Do you follow the example of Christ? You know, for, for a long time they had that WWJD, you know, what would Jesus do? Which I think is, is a good example of things that we should do in life. You know, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus act and react if he was placed in the same situations we were? How would he act and react if he was having financial burdens? How would he act and react if he was having marital problems? All right, we know he wasn't married, but I'm saying, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus act and react if he was having other family troubles or church problems or other situations? How would Jesus approach it? He's already given us the answers to those questions through his word. He has already guided us in the right direction. Now, the question is, are we following him? Or are we following our own conscience and our own mind and our own will and our own desires? Or are we following his will and his desire for our life? You see, those are the questions we have to ask. Everybody said, oh, yeah, I'm a true follower of Jesus. I do the things that I'm supposed to do. I try my best to live that way. But how much do we truly follow the example set forth for us? Okay? Now, I know that we will never be sin-free as long as we're in this flesh, and I'm not going to try to fool anybody by thinking you will. But what I am telling you, the closer we get to Jesus Christ, the more we develop our relationship with him, the more we abide on the vine, the more chance we have to become true disciples of Christ. All right? Picking up our cross daily and following him. You know what it is to pick up your cross? You say, oh, well, that means i got to suffer every day. No, he's talking about crucifying the flesh. Putting to death that old man. Putting on that new creation that God has given us. We are new men in Christ. Old things are passed away. All right? Now all things are new. Because we are in Christ, he will teach us every day, give us something more every day. And that's why we desire to be those disciples. His disciples followed him because they got to see so much different every day. They loved him so much. And he blessed them every day. Think about what it is to be a true follower of Jesus Christ with the example that he set forth. I'm not talking about a follower of him as he walked on this earthly ministry under the law. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a risen, glorified Savior who set forth an example of how you and I are to live our lives. Just like he lived his life in the flesh and just as he lives his life today in <clears throat> an ascended heaven preparing a place for us. Why? Because he loves us. Taking care of us every day because he loves us. Not right? What kind of disciple are you? Because he says, if you abide in me, you will be my disciples. All right? <clears throat> and then I want you to come down to uh, verse number 11. And this is the last thing, and I'm going to hush after this. But I want you to look and see what he says you will have. These things have I spoke unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy may be full, full, okay? Not half a cup of joy, and how many of us have a quarter cup of joy, okay? How many of us are <clears throat> not understanding the true joys of life? And remember, happiness and joy are two completely different things. Happiness depends entirely upon things that happen, okay? If good things happen, you may win a brand new car, and that may make you happy, 
all right, for a period of time until the first time that car breaks down or till the first time it gets a scratch on it or whatever it may be. But that all is something that happened that gave you a period of happiness. Joy is a way of life, okay? You're not always going to go around smiling all the time, but we know within ourselves, and that's the joy that is full in us, that we know that within ourselves, we can have peace, we can have love, we can have all the things that Christ provides for us, all the heavenly blessings that we're ever going to receive. We know that we have hope in a hopeless world. All right? And that fills us with joy. No matter the circumstance I'm in, no matter how hard today is, God told me joy cometh in the morning, that it is coming, and that fills me with joy to know that I am Christ. I am protected by the God Almighty, the all-powerful, all-seeing Lord of lords and King of kings. I am protected by him. I am surrounded by his love. Remember last week in our message, we talked about the power of God, that we are protected by all the things of his power. The power of his name, the power of his blood, the power of his love. All the things that we talked about that he has so much power. And I'm not going to re-preach that message because if I get started on that, <clears throat> that's where we'll be. But what I'm saying is think about what true joy is. Okay, It's a way you live. You live joyfully, even in bad circumstances. Why? Because we live above our circumstances. He didn't say, I didn't, if you live in me, he said, your joy will be full. Think about what that means. Full. Full. Complete understanding. Think about it. Now, what kind of joy do you have? Now, let me ask you this question. Jesus says, I am the true vine. You are the branches. You're the one that's going to produce the fruit. Okay, what kind of fruit are you producing? Are you still connected to the vine? Are you still living in Christ? Because he has promised all of these things if we're living in him. Do you have these things that we've talked about this morning? Do you have every one of them? Is your joy full? All right. <clears throat> are you a disciple of Christ? Do you bear fruit because you glorify God, are you giving God the honor and the glory that he deserves? Do your prayers have power? Are you still connected to the life-giving source or have you fallen off? Because I'm telling you, <clears throat> A tomato that falls from the vine can't hook back to the vine and continue to live. Okay? A bean that falls off of its vine cannot reconnect to the vine and continue to live. A pumpkin that comes off its vine cannot reconnect to the vine and continue to live. But Christ has given us the ability to connect back to that vine and live. He says, put your, put yourself in this place. Continue in the place of Christ. Abide in me. And he said, and I will give you all these things. Isn't that wonderful? Now search your heart this morning and find out where you are. Find out who you are. Are you still connected to the life source? If not, reconnect today. Reconnect this morning. So that God can bless you with all these wonderful gifts that he's shown us in his word. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray that you reveal within us who we are. Whether we are living in Christ. Whether we are remaining in you. If we are abiding in the vine. God, we know and have an understanding you are the life source. And we want to be connected to that life source. We want these blessings that you said you would give us. And God, we cry out for them today. We pray that God will receive all the glory and all that's done through this message. 
through our lives. Lord, that each of us could go out and bear fruit. God, that we could accomplish your will. And Lord, when we <clears throat> stay in you, we know that our joy will be full, not part way, but all the way. Because we know, God, you don't do things partially. You do it all. You do it till we are filled. You do it till it is perfect. And God, we pray for that today within our own hearts, within our own church. We pray that you bless us and make us bearers of fruit. In Jesus' name, amen.